One of the areas where people make mistakes with acoustics is the actual thickness of the product. They don't consider where the thickness of the panel needs to be in relation to what frequencies they actually need to absorb in the room. Again, this is a lot of common sense for a lot of people, but they just don't really think about it. So, first thing with acoustics is really paying attention to your panel thickness. What does it do versus what frequencies are going on in your room? I tell people all the time, take a look at the grand piano. We all know there's a reason why the higher keys are in a shallower depth. The lower keys are in a much deeper cavity of the uh, piano. That's because low frequencies, longer wavelengths. Longer wavelengths need more space to develop. Think of your three-way loudspeaker. There's a reason why it has that great big bottom speaker for the low frequencies, a smaller speaker for the mids, and a little tweeter for the highs. Again, size is everything when it comes to audio. When it comes to sound, you think same thing has to be considered with your acoustic treatment and with your panels. So how thick do these acoustic panels need to be to absorb the frequency you're looking for? Well, we're going to take a look at a few absorption coefficient charts and how our Prime Acoustic Broadway panels compare to the Orlex foam panels that are out there. Now, if you've never looked at an absorption chart before, you'll see that across the bottom of the chart is your selection of frequencies ranging from 100 Hertz up to 5K. And on the left hand side of the graph, there's a number from 0 going up to 1.0 and then usually a couple numbers above that. What that means is basically 0 to 1.0. 1.0 is 100% absorption of a given frequency across the bottom. So looking at the first graph, we're looking at 1 inch panels. How a 1 inch Broadway compares to 1 inch Orlex foam. And you'll notice first of all the foam t drops off very quickly, very early, between 2K and 2.5K, and really falls off down to the 0.5 mark. Now the 0.5 mark is what I consider the last meaningful number in the absorption chart. Anything below 0.5, below 50% absorption, really isn't doing a whole lot for your room. So just considering everything above that 0.5 line, you see that foam starts losing its effectiveness, as I said, between 2K and 2.5K, and it's really only working down to about 800 hertz, maybe 630 at best. Whereas the one inch fiberglass tends to go much lower. If one inch fiberglass is going down to 500 hertz before it even starts tapering off, and then it's continuing to work effectively down to about the 315 hertz range. Still not effective enough for a recording studio, doesn't take care of enough of our low frequencies for us, but it's certainly uh, very effective in a boardroom environment or any sort of area where we're only worried about the spoken word. Uh, that's going to provide more than enough absorption in the, in the vo vocal frequencies, especially because we aren't amplifying the human voice. The next graph we're going to look at is 2-inch foam versus the 2-inch fiberglass. So, you'll notice in this graph that it becomes a lot more linear. However, the foam starts to roll off fairly early as well. You can see that 2-inch foam rolls off at almost the same point as the 1-inch fiberglass. So you really need almost as double the material to have similar absorption properties to the fiberglass panel. But you can see the 2-inch fiberglass continues down to 250 hertz, and it's quite effective down below 160, down pretty much to 125 hertz, where it's still really working for you. The final graph we're going to take a look at is the 3-inch fiberglass versus 3-inch foam. Now that you can see the 3-inch fiberglass, in a perfect world, I'd like to use this in every installation. It's very broadband, very linear, continues doing the same amount of absorption down to 100 hertz and even lower. Whereas the foam really doesn't work a whole lot more than the 2-inch foam does. Uh, again, diminishing returns. It's quite a bit thicker piece of foam, but not absorbing a whole lot more than that 2-inch foam did. It's falling off around 500 hertz and really only effective down to about 250 hertz range. So you can see foam really isn't that effective. Uh, these graphs are especially important because all of these materials were tested in the exact same laboratory, Riverbank Labs in Chicago. Though our competitor Orlex uh, is using the exact same lab as us and ourselves, it's because it's a third-party laboratory facility and it's real apples-to-apples -apples comparison of how the panels will react in the exact same room. So a very uh, uh, fair comparison across all three thicknesses of materials. Other tools we can use to increase the effectiveness of our absorption? Introducing an airspace behind the absorption panel. Now, Prime Acoustic has developed a piece called the Offset Impaler. 
and the offset impaler gives you three and a half inches of airspace or a standoff of three and a half inches to lift that panel off of the wall. Why three and a half inches? Well, acousticians, architects, and the like have been doing this for years using two by four studs to space those panels off from the wall. We knew this and we decided, okay, we'll incorporate this into our design. And then we actually went out and tested to see what the panel would do with that three and a half inches of airspace. So now the absorption graph you're going to be looking at shows our three inch panel and our three inch panel on three and a half inches of airspace. And you'll see that in the low mids, the 200 hertz up to about 400, 500 hertz range has really increased by up to 30% absorption in those, in those frequency ranges. And then that increase continues, becomes a bit more subtle all the way up to 5K. But you can see it really just gives you more bang for your buck. By introducing some airspace behind that panel, you increase the efficiency overall. So besides the thickness, you also have to worry about the density. The reason that foam really was not working that effectively in all those graphs we were looking at is because it's a very low density material. At one time, foam was quite rigid. As time has moved on, foam being an oil-based product, the price of oil has gone up. Every manufacturer of acoustic foam on the planet has introduced more air into their foam, making the material lighter weight, but allowing people to get the same coverage for the same amount of money. By doing so, they've made that foam less and less effective at lower frequencies. Current foam is only about 1.3 pounds per cubic foot. Traditionally, foam was 2 or 2.2 pounds per cubic foot, so it's really it's lightened by almost 1 pound per cubic foot in density. Why is density important? High density is required to absorb lower frequencies. There must be a certain amount of rigidity and mass to a panel for it to absorb lo uh, lower frequencies. Now you don't want it to be too dense because then it'll start to reflect high frequencies. Years ago, acousticians latched on to a fiberglass insulation product manufactured by Owens Corning. You may have heard it referred to as 703 or 705 being the trade names for this product. And it was a rigid fiberglass board that was produced. Acousticians quickly learned that this product was the perfect density to absorb lows while still absorbing highs, not so hard to start reflecting highs. So this 703 was three pounds per cubic foot, and then the ultimate was 705, at which was approximately six pounds per cubic foot. Prime Acoustic Broadway is a six pound per cubic foot board, which makes it that, gives it that mass and that rigidity to absorb those low frequencies, but also being soft enough to still absorb the highs. Another important difference between foam and fiberglass is fire safety. Very little foam on the planet is rated for fire safety. It does not have a fire rating that is stringent enough to meet public occupancy fire codes. Generally in North America we refer to this as a class one or a class A fire rating. Most foam has only been rated with a furniture spec, which means it has a fire retardant in it, but it's not safe enough for a public occupancy building. The Prime Acoustic Broadway line of acoustic panels has been tested to achieve class one or class A fire rating uh, in North America to be strong and uh, uh, safe in any application, public occupancy application. The next problems with acoustic foam is they're easy to damage, messy to install, and painful to move. Anyone that has looked at this old acoustic foam that's out there, you'll see that generally it has to be glued to a wall. Usually it starts to deteriorate over time, becomes very dusty and crumbly and starts to really fall apart and starts to fade and just really not look good after uh, uh, a few years of service on your wall. Prime Acoustic Broadway is a fabric wrapped panel, a very nice pleasant to look at panel. This can be vacuumed as it gets dusty over time. You can just run a vacuum over it just like a piece of furniture and it'll clean right up. And then if you flip around to the back of the panel here, you'll see the open exposed fiberglass. Now, generally when people talk about open or exposed fiberglass or that insulation in your home, you immediately start scratching your skin and worrying about the itch and the fibers breaking through and what happens when I breathe those. Not a worry with prime acoustic acoustic panels. What we have done is encapsulate the fiberglass with a micro mesh. You can handle this all day long, keeps all those fibers contained nice and clean and safe to install in your home or in a public occupancy environment. So Prime Acoustic Broadway really does look professional, simple to install, fire safe and available multiple different thicknesses to make sure that you really are tackling the frequencies you need to worry about. 
And that sums up our series on controlling sound with absorption. Be sure to check out the other videos in Prime Acoustics audio education series.